10. Arvia as an XL class is the largest ship that you've ever received into the port. I'm delighted to bring our 4,365 guests here today. We appreciate your visit. And when you do come to St. Lucia, we want to be the best host that it can ever be. So, welcome to St. Lucia. We look forward to seeing you many more times in the future. Nine. I think the most significant part of, of these celebrations is going to be the youth rallies, where the young people are going to be in their schools, where young people are going to express themselves. I think I'm also very excited about the expressions of creativity, mm -hmm. the fashion shows, the business expo, etc. Where what is solution is going to be is going to be in, in on display. Mm -hmm. And an, an aspect of, of this year's program it is decentralized. Everybody's going to be involved. There is something in in in, in the viewport. So generally I think the program will bring all solutions together and it's decentralized and the whole of St. Lucia will, will, will be able to participate. 8. St. Lucia and France reaffirmed their respective commitments to continue nurturing their storied diplomatic relationship and exploring avenues to enhance developmental support. I had a very fruitful meeting with the, the Prime Minister and uh, we exchange and we underline both of us the importance of our cooperation. This administration and the Prime Minister in particular has always been keen on cooperating with the French. Seven. Scores of marginalized and less fortunate households on St. Lucia have begun benefiting from close to US $100,000 in items donated from the Taiwanese Embassy to the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice and Empowerment. St. Lucia is now recovering from the pandemic and Taiwan government is here to extend our utmost support to the economic stability of St. Lucia. Six. St. Lucia and Martinique continue to advance cooperation to strengthen cross-border security between the two territories. Ambassador His Excellency Francis Etienne and General William Baquet led a delegation of gendarmerie officials to St. Lucia. General Baquet formally notified the Prime Minister about the delivery of a shipment of forensic materials to help improve capacity at the St. Lucia Forensic Science Laboratory. So today I come with uh, a gift of 100 kilos of forensic material. Before concluding their courtesy visit to St. Lucia, the French delegation also toured the Forensic Science Laboratory, interfaced with the High Command of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and officials in the Ministry of Home Affairs with a view to coordinating training opportunities for the Marine Unit and pursuing forensic cooperation. Five. The National Anti-Money Laundering Oversight Committee, NAMLOC, presented certificates of participation to stakeholders involved in reviewing the recent amendments to St. Lucia's anti-money laundering, terrorism and proliferation financing legislation. One piece of legislation which will impact several service providers is the Virtual Assets Business Act, which was recently passed in December 2022. Anyone wanting to provide virtual asset business from or within St. Lucia would have to be licensed. 4. LipFest, a literary festival held in observance of Nobel Laureate Week. Poetry, song, drama, the spoken word and dub poetry were among the areas of the arts showcased at the inaugural event, which organizers say is a spin-off of the Central Library's lunchtime poetry sessions. This activity concentrates on highlighting the talents that exist amongst us through song, poetry, recital, and the creative and performing arts. Three. Of the Seven Crops Project, a joint collaboration between the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development and the Taiwan Technical Mission. In their latest feat, the Seven Crops Project handed over inputs as well as battery-operated small machinery to the Agriculture Ministry as part of their efforts to create a more sustainable and appealing agriculture sector. Two. Residents of Bhutto participated in a NEMO-facilitated fire prevention workshop. 
we got a call from the Bhutto community asking us to help them out so that they could understand and learn um, how to deal with fires how to deal with um, any emergencies or disasters arising out of fires. One. Wetlands are purifiers and habitats for thousands of species of aquatic and terrestrial plants and animals. Human activities, we have to do it in a sustainable way, in a managed way, that we're not destroying that very resource, destroying our own, you know, livelihoods. 